What's going on, everyone? Got welcome to a bit of a different video. So usually on this channel you see vlogs, and the channel then BCFC vlogs. But uh, I've decided to do a bit of a different video because I actually couldn't. I managed to get tickets to Fleetwood away. Because tickets sold out within two minutes. And as you guys know, the game has already happened. In case you guys didn't notice, but Bradford did manage to win the first leg. Uh, one nil with an absolute stunning header from Rora McArdle. And then the second leg finished uh, no nil, which I'm alright with personally. I remember watching on TV, it was quite good, and yeah, today I'm going to do my little review of both games by, well, in the game, in the background, just got some random gameplay, but basically, I'm going to start off the episode by asking about three new signings that I've already made, however, all these players are 20 or under, I start off, they've apparently signed a guy called Callum Gunner, a central midfielder who used to have the in town, he's currently 18 years of age, and then they've also signed Ty Tyrell Robinson, who's a left wing back, and used to play for Arsenal, which is not too bad at all. And finally, they've signed Omari Patrick, who used to play for Barnsley, and Kidderminster Harriers, don't know what league they're in. I feel like it's Scottish, but I'm probably wrong. Uh, who's currently at the age of 20 and he's an attacker. So yeah, we're supposed to go and sign those three players, and yeah, let's just go into this. So, I'm going to give my quick little update on the game. Not gonna lie guys, I'm gonna focus on the second leg rather than the first leg because I did actually go to the first leg as it was um, at home of course. And uh, yeah, so starting off in the third, it was gonna do a quick little recap of the first leg. Mercado's stunning header was enough to give the Bantams the lead in the playoff, in the playoff first leg. Uh, it took 77 minutes I feel like I wanna say. Could be wrong there, but I believe it was 77 minutes for the for Bradford to actually take the lead. And it was a great goal. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. And uh, yeah. Uh, this so far um, was a good game, and Bradford did uh, at, the, at the end of the first half. Bradford did have 70% possession compared to Fleetwood's 30, not the best. And to be honest, I'm not real surprised Fleetwood didn't really play too well against us. Where I don't think really vain, but Bradford are probably one, probably up there with some of the best teams in the league compared to Fleetwood Town. And if you've seen the stadium, it holds 5,000 people. Okay, you only get Bradford 700 seats. All right, how is anyone supposed to get on that? Uh, but yeah, and. Yeah, so Bradford in the first leg also managed to win the game, which is pretty obvious. We're going to go from Mercado, as I mentioned about four times. Anyway, moving on to the second leg. Wait, no. The first leg, the possession was great. I think Bradford was some of the best I've seen the play in ages, which is vital to this game, as it was obviously a playoff first leg. And last year, in case you guys don't know, Bradford did lose 3 1 at home in the first leg versus Millwall, who, guess who Bradford playing in the final? Millwall. But yeah, uh, it was quite a good game, and. Yeah, quite big because uh, of what happened last year, Bradford needed, could not afford a repeat of that and clearly they did not. So this time it was 1-0 at home. Moving on to the second leg, uh, Stuart McCall, the Bradford manager, managed to outsmart Uwe, 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 I don't know if I said, is it Uwe or Uwe? Uwe, I want to say Uwe, Uwe, Uwe Rosler, I don't know how to pronounce that, who in my opinion is a great manager, I think he's probably up there for the manager of the season. I don't think he won it, I think it went to Chef uh, Night manager, I forgot his name. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is the highest ever finish Fleetwood have got, by the way, which is pretty insane. And they've got something like seven promotions in ten seasons, which is absolutely incredible, to be honest. But yeah, Bradford weren't as good in the second leg, mainly because they, they were happy to play out for a draw, which in the end they did get. Because despite the fact that Bradford draw, I think it's, it might be 20, I'm not sure if it is, but 20 plus games a season, uh, this was the one game where a draw was more than good. And Bradford. Honestly, they came close very early on with a header from Charlie White, which originally, because I watched it on TV, it looked like he just he just went he just missed the like missed missed the goal, but he actually hit the post and then went and then bounced back into play and was cleared out easily. But uh, yeah, Fleetwood did actually not look too bad to be honest. But Matt Marshall and Charlie White in this game just terrific to be honest. I, especially Marshall, I think he was man of the match. And by the way, in the first match, it was actually Joshua Cullen who was even man of the match. But yeah. Uh, there was also another chance when the ball was just smashed straight out of Marshall, smacked him in the face, and just went over the bar. Not too bad at all. And then I think there was, I can't remember what, but I think there might have been the one where there was a goal kick and it came. Big Cullen down to Marshall, and then Marshall uh, obviously had the opportunity, and I think he missed it. I can't remember. That might have been, might, that might have been, been a chance I mentioned. I am not too sure, to be honest. But yeah, uh, so. Fleetwood did play a bit differently actually, they did change their team sheet as 
uh, Fleetwood brought in Ashley Hunter for Devante Cole of all people. Devante Cole who obviously joined Fleetwood from Brad while we got Jamie Proctor who was a great player until he decided to betray us and follow Phil Parkinson to Bolton. Obviously this did pay off for him. Uh, actually did pay off for him because Bolton got promotion but he moved to Carlisle United. Uh, so uh, Proctor's played for four teams in about two seasons. Not the best for him. Well, not the best. I, I don't know what I'm saying. Game. All right, but yeah, and then of course well it was Bradford who did come out victorious, a 1-0 Aguirre win. Uh, not too bad of a game, but it will be Bradford who finished fifth in the league. And what was that throw him? Who will be playing sixth in the league? Millwall who managed to come away with a 3-1 victory away from home at Scunthorpe. Right, just to turn off the uh, clip there while I got up the match stats. So the Bradford match stats versus Fleetwood in the second leg. I won't be able to get players to go. Sorry about that. But the, f the first leg, the it was uh, the second leg. I mean, possession was 44.7% to Fleetwood and 55.3% to Bradford. I don't even know the word that, to be honest. But uh, Bradford ended up have 12 shots compared to Fleetwood's five. Uh, well, either side had just one game shot, uh, two shots, sorry, on Tyler. Honestly, can't even remember Bradford having two shots. Um, off Tyler, Bradford managed to have eight though, which isn't the best. And I'm not going to concentrate on FIFA right now, to be honest. I'm just trying to read out these stats at the same time. But uh, yeah, well, Fleetwood had two off target and. I don't know what this means, but blocked. Probably Bradford had two block shots and Fleetwood had one. And uh, yeah, not too bad of a game. There were two saves for either side, of course, because there were two shots on target for either side. And then there were nine fouls committed by Fleetwood and seven for Bradford. And as I concede versus Fleetwood, I am going to end the video there. David Ball, who, by the way, in the first leg missed an absolute sitter, practically a one and one. With yeah, Colin Doyle after that, I'm just trying to find it. Right, let's try. Goal kick done. fell straight to David Ball, and he's he's um he tried chipping as like a six foot five, I think it is, goalkeeper. Not the best idea in the world, mate. Uh, but obviously failed because Fleetwood did not manage to score in two games against Bradford, despite the fact that Corrin two goals in the previous two games against Bradford. And uh, yeah. that's been the end of the video. If you guys did enjoy it, let me know. And I will, be, in fact, be going to Wembley. And good news about that, guys. My amazing, amazing father has managed to get tickets, not only for Wembley, but in an amazing angle. So I've got great seats. And look, it's not like Scum 4 for I think it was Bury, was it? Walk away. We were sat right on the front row. So we've got very good seats against, uh, against, against Millwall at Wembley. Plus, we sat right next to the fans who are singing. Yes, we will be at the brink of where... Bradford fans starting so the vlog should be amazing and hoping to get at least well honestly I'm hoping to get 1,000 views on that video I did manage to get quite a lot in the Sheffield United video which I wasn't really expecting first but I suppose it is a rivalry plus a lot most of the views were Sheffield United fans uh, but yeah that is the end of the video if you guys did enjoy it let me know uh, let me know any like weird I want to do more like football challenges on this video on this channel I do have another channel called GVO Sports but it's been a bit dead recently at the not know like I'm bummed for some that. So yeah, not sure how that channel's going to work out, probably end, to be honest, not going to lie. But yeah, that is going to be the end of the video. Let me know some football challenges, let me know if you're hyped for that Wembley vlog, and can we get road to Wembley, even though we've already got there, and I don't know what I'm saying anymore. But yeah, that's going to be the end of the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!